شريك لك نبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك نبيك the Honorable Ustad Abu Taymiyyah spent between 2010 and 2014 in Yemen, Damaj, where he memorized the Quran, learned the Arabic language, fiqh, memorized over around half of Bukhari, and also a book, compilation of Aqidah, consisting of 350 ahadith. Upon returning to the UK, he has been involved in many institutions and organizations, and many lessons and lectures can be found on his YouTube. He is also a graduate from the prestigious Islamic University of Medina, faculty of Sharia with an overall score of 4.87 out of 5. He is also a qualified inheritance distributor, certified by Meshad and Nebui in Medina. When pursuing his studies in Medina, he completed his last two years of an Arabic diploma, memorizing books such as Bulugh al Maram, a compilation of a hadith related to fiqh, consisting of over 1,400 hadiths and others as well. Certification from Meshid and Nibwi can also be provided upon request. He also has ijazats in Quran with various modes. Ijazats in Asim with both riwayat. Ijaza in Qalun with four riwayat. Ijazats in Kisai with both riwayat. Abu Harith and Aduri. Certificates can be provided upon request. He is currently reading Khalaf an Hamza on Sheikh Jalal who is from the very well-known Qurra based in Birmingham. He also has certificates from Meshid Nebwi for what he has memorized and has ijazats in all nine books of hadith and many others. He has studied with the scholars of Yemen and while in Medina studied with Sheikh Suleiman al-Ruhili, Sheikh Saleh al-Sindi, Sheikh Saleh al-Usaymi, Sheikh Abdul Salam al-Shuwayr, Sheikh Sa'ad, Al-Shitri, Sheikh Abdul Razak, Al-Badr, and many more. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu salamu ala Rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa sallama tasliman kathira. Our dear Dean Love viewers, welcome to this uh, very uh, amazing uh, episode with our auspicious guest, Sheikh Ustad Abu Taymiyyah, who came all the way from the UK. And then we also have another Abu Taymiyyah. By the way, you guys have the same <laughs> <laughs> nickname. Or, uh, and so, inshallah. Abu Taymiyyah Sheikh. Shafi'i. He is. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's a Shafi'i. <laughs> right, Abu Nu'im. He changes based off of the seasons. We only have two here in Minnesota. <laughs> so, Sheikh how are you doing? Well, alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair for having me on. It's an absolute pleasure. Inshallah. It's, a, you know, it's an honor having you here. And it's been uh, long overdue, honestly. Alhamdulillah. Sharaf lana. The honor is ours. And so, uh, Abu Taymiyyah, Athani, <laughs> Kaifik. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. He's, he's a regular he's, here, right? He's, he's, a, he's a veteran. Yeah, yeah, Whenever yeah. he shows up, you know, uh, Alhamdulillah. So, that's our brother. So, first and foremost, we know we had, a, we had an event last night at Abu Bakr, a Sadiq in Minneapolis. And um, needless to say, people showed out. Right, and uh, Minneapolis is now on the map for other things. So uh, it's another thing to add to our list. Um, you had a lot of good in the sense of people that showed out, you know, alhamdulillah, in, in numbers, record numbers. I would say maybe three to 5,000 people. Easy. If you kind of, you know, you take account for upstairs, downstairs, and sister people side. People told to go back. <sighs> people uh, outside, <laughs> right? So uh, I know this was a sort of a hectic experience for all of us. We had never seen anything like this before. Um, how was your experience? My experience in Minnesota and America. <laughs> <laughs> no, first let's start with last night. Uh, we'll get to, yeah. Sheikh, I'm still recovering from the trauma. Inshallah. <laughs> 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 subhanAllah, a lot of things have happened on this trip that would not necessarily happen on the norm, right? But yesterday was a very, very different experience. Honestly, no. when I woke up that morning, um, I don't, th and I don't think that, you know. In my wildest dreams, like I thought something like that would happen, you know. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, everything happens for a reason. I think, as you mentioned, also a lot of khair came out of it. The fact that no. so many Muslims came out yes. to listen to myself, who's uh, pretty much conservative, right? 
And we always hear negative things about America, especially Minnesota. Oh, right, especially in the UK. Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. Now, of course, there's a lot of good things associated to Minnesota. For yeah. example, now the Quran, you guys are bringing out Hufad like no other place. No. While at the same time, we hear that feminism and liberalism mm. is very, very prevalent uh, amongst Somalis. I don't know whether that's true or not. But uh, honestly, my perspective has changed on a lot of things since I came to America, right? And even more so, Minnesota. The brothers, right, when we were putting this uh, event together, uh, the plan wasn't even to have a sisters only event mm. simply because they thought maybe the uh, feminist liberals uh, would maybe cause them a lot of problems, get to their sisters' minds and their heads, pollute them, yeah. and maybe even prevent them from coming to the event. So they thought maybe it wouldn't have been a good idea. But subhanAllah, there was a rumor that was spread after it was announced that there was going to be a sister's event, that it was cancelled. The amount of messages that I received on Instagram and on Twitter, even by email, of sisters literally saying, please don't cancel it. And SubhanAllah. We really want to hear you out and we're looking forward to it. We really want to benefit and so on and so forth. And I'm thinking, <coughs> what's going on here, you know? SubhanAllah. But yesterday, SubhanAllah, you know, the fact that you know thousands of Muslims came out, mainly youngsters, to benefit, honestly, that was very, very touching. Really, really was touching. And it shows that there is a lot of good in them, mm. right? And that maybe the feminists and the liberals, they're actually a minority amongst many. Some may be affected, but they don't identify uh, to be part of these groups. Yes. Uh, and of course, living in this environment, we have to expect that people are going to get affected by the different isms and the yeah, ideology, yeah. ideologies that are out there, right? As we're being constantly challenged intellectually yeah. on a regular basis, wherever you turn to, right? So may Allah bless both brothers and sisters, yeah. and especially the sisters, right? Uh, who have a lot of khair with them, right? I mean, Honestly, I mean, there is I mean. you know, a lot of good in them. I mean, uh, br mm. brother Idris didn't, didn't make it. <laughs> what, was, I, what was holding you back? I was, I was I'm not gonna lie. I, I I think I was one of the, one of the people that didn't anticipate mm. what was gonna happen. I thought I was gonna come to them and say, "You take my slippers off, come to Hayatul Masjid, pray." Uh. A brother called me, said, "Akhi, I'm by the door. Literally, I'm by the door, and it's jam packed, so you can't so. even get in." So I was out in the back area helping people get into the gym. Um, you know, just making sure it wasn't too crowded. Um, trying to work with traffic stuff like that. We were out actually trying to make things happen on the outside so Alhamdulillah people showed out in large numbers um, And also people just you know when you're when you're in an event it was freezing cold It's yeah, not like you yeah, could tell yeah, people yeah. just go outside really for a little bad. bit. Well, so people need to understand the context It was negative 16 so you can't just tell people go out while we yeah, yeah. make some space or nobody's gonna do that so a lot of context, especially on social media, is being missed. Yes. And alhamdulillah, everybody that knows and who's sincere that was there knows the situation. Yeah. I think um, this is a, subhanAllah, it's a situation where the narrative could be easily hijacked. Yeah. And people say, oh, you see here? Huh? Huh? You see the guys? Huh? Yeah. You see? And it has nothing to do with that. Anyone who's there would know that this was one of those, you know, I mean, every situation is qadr Allah, but this one was Qadr Allah Like this was big time We had no Like you said Nobody anticipated When you put on your socks In the morning yeah. You didn't think I knew it was going to be packed out But not like But not like this <laughs> yeah. though. I thought it was going to be like a, You know Like a cute little pack yeah, out yeah. And then close the doors And people still yeah. walking by And hey what's going on It's a different level <laughs> no. Cars being towed yeah. Right Shout out to the Minneapolis city Yeah um, I got my car Told <laughs> they told my car. Subhanallah. They told your car yesterday. Yeah, yeah, brother. And I parked it in a place where I thought it was like safe. No dua, make dua for you us. Didn't, you didn't uh, retrieve the emergency. car yet. There's no emergency. I think I have, to, I have to go after this yeah, there's no to go pick it up. <laughs> may Allah, may Allah so, I mean, place it with that which is better. I mean, I mean. So, um, well, I, you know, uh, it's, there's a lot of things that happened. Good, you know, it was great that people came out, but also. There are people who probably didn't come out for the right intentions. And when you have people who come uh, that are trying to learn for the sake of Allah and they're trying to benefit, and then you have people who just need content on social media. Yeah, I just want to point out, right, and I gave uh, the sisters this reminder. Yeah. 
because they had to remove all of the, all of the brothers, right? And the plan initially was to have the sisters in the women's section, you know, behind the curtain, right? Because no. the curtain was out. Brothers in the men's uh, section, right? The allocated area, and and the remaining sisters, I think it was upstairs or something, right? Uh, but then eventually, just completely spiraled out of control, right? So the fact that there are videos going around of both men and women sitting with one another. That was not something that it was planned. It was uh, not planned. It was not planned was at not all. Planned. That really, really wasn't the case because I've seen some people saying, "Why is he allowing this it's to take place?" Yeah, yeah. Maybe just a tweet or two, and on the ground is you know pretty much different. Yeah. The whole thing just spiraled out of control, and that's why we eventually ended up kicking the brothers out. We actually had to remove the brothers. Some even travelled ahead from Chicago. Yeah, from outside of Minnesota, not just Minneapolis, but Minnesota, which is the state, sah. They came from far and they had to be removed. And may Allah Azza wa Jalla reward them. Every amin, step amin, you amin. took towards the masjid, it's on your scale of good deeds. Remember, you came for Allah, mm. right? And your reward is with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So um, I think it's, uh, it's worth pointing out that this whole celebrity culture, Allah, it's unacceptable, and it's unfortunate that it's become like that. Um, you know, I'm not an MBA or a uh, what's the other thing that you guys play? <laughs> football? That's it. Ba- we have baseball here. Yeah. Baseball yeah, or whatever. Football, football. Yani even, <laughs> you know, reacting to an NBA player or a uh, NFL yeah, or yeah, baseball yeah. Yeah. personality is not right. As Muslims, nah, that's, that's not right. This that's is true. a practice that has been taken from the non-Muslims. Yes. And I made it very, very clear to them, my sisters, right? I'm not a superstar. I'm not a celebrity. I'm none other than your brother. SubhanAllah. My whole goal and objective was to enlighten the American Muslims to take their religion so mm. much more seriously. My whole job when delivering these lectures not to get a rise out of the crowd, it is to make you aware that we are under attack from an ideological perspective. Normative Islam, right, is being hunted down. It's under attack. And we need to do something about it, right? If you look at this generation compared to the previous generation, they are worse. Let's be honest with ourselves, right? That's true. Every generation is only getting worse simply because, yeah. and we'll maybe speak about this later, um, a woman's potential is going to waste, mm. right? The woman's busy, and of course the man's busy grinding, right? But then the woman, she wants to do her thing as well. And then who's the victim in all of this? None other than the children. If we as a generation barely have any knowledge with regards to our Islamic morals and values, then what do you expect from the next generation? SubhanAllah. Right? I made it very, very clear to them yeah. that this type of fangirling or uh, fanboying is not from Islam. SubhanAllah. I just came to enlighten you guys. I'm your brother. I just want khair for every single one of you. Right? I had a particular message when coming to America and I've been delivering it everywhere. And alhamdulillah, many have appreciated it. I've had sisters message me saying that they left feminism. They moved away from that. People want to hold on to their religion uh, in a lot more. Uh, proud and un- unapologetic way. Yeah, yeah. So that that really makes me happy because this is what I really wanted. Yeah. As mm. Umm Khattab radiallahu ta'ala would say, we are Umm that Allah Azza wa Jal has, you know, honored with Al Islam. Yeah. And the moment we desire other than Islam, Allah Azza will humiliate us. And we're seeing this humiliation the moment we start behaving in an un Islamic way. Yeah. Right? Unfortunately, the Somali community here in Minneapolis has become a laughing stock on Twitter. Yeah. Right? We've been following it. All the brothers have been... They've become memes. Yeah, they've turned into memes. And that is due to our own doings, right? That's true. Just as Umar al-Khattab said, The moment we desire other than Islam, Allah will humiliate us, right? SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. May no, Allah Azza wa Jal protect us. I mean, I mean, and so... I don't, I don't want to really get into the uh, event. We're probably going to have to dedicate that for another podcast, honestly. You know, we don't want to take away from, you know, this moment. Um, but what would, what, what would you say? Was this the biggest turnout you've got, do you think? Or? Ever? No, no, in, in uh, the U.S. while you're a tour. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. Maybe it was. You know, in Ohio, subhanAllah, yeah. it was huge. It was big. Virginia was pretty huge as well. SubhanAllah. Like in Virginia, they were planning on uh, uh, doing the event in a Ikhra. small little building, Ikhra Center, right? I remember even my uncle said that he actually went there in the morning to count how many people can sit there. Uh, my auntie, may Allah Azza bless her, and my uncle, I mean, I mean. they normally don't even get involved in <laughs> setting up da'wah events, but when they heard it was going to be in that small little center, right, they got involved. They mm. were shouting. Aunties were yeah. getting involved. So the heat was on the organizers, right, to do something about it. And I had a conversation with Sheikh Ahmed Azwa, may Allah bless him. I mean. 
And you know they were making a lot of dua and they had a lot of optimism. Yeah. And eventually it was a big W, you know. It ended up being a huge, Alhamdulillah. successful event. Alhamdulillah. They booked out one of the reception halls for I think like maybe five thousand dollars, right? And Alhamdulillah, they managed to get the money in no time. And it was a really, really nice event. Oh, really, really nice event, right? That place would have only fit maybe what two hundred people. Yeah. But over two thousand people turned up. Allah Akbar. Right. And it was at very short notice as well. Yeah. Ohio was pretty big, really, really huge. I've never seen a masjid that is that big on the ground, like in one. Because I've been to masjid. Right? Huh? Yeah. 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 No, no, masjid. Yeah, it was masjid Abu Bakr, not Ibn Taymiyyah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Ibn Taymiyyah, I don't think would have fit that. They told me there was like 3,250 people there. Oh, okay, okay. No. People came from all over yeah. Michigan, Subhanallah. right? And Indiana and some of the neighboring areas. So it was a huge masjid, huge. I've never seen a masjid like that on the ground. Yeah. Wow. And then they had a second floor and a third floor as well. Each floor was full to the brim. Uh-huh. And that was pretty successful as well, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. But uh, Minnesota, Qadr Allah ma shafa'a. Hopefully, inshallah, today we'll work out. We're going so, to have hus so, so, Allah. So some people heard what you said, Afwan. Mm-hmm. Um, during the end of the event, you said like, uh, Will I come back here? Allahu A'lam. For, for them, they interpret that he's not coming back. And so mm. people are kind of tripping. And so um, clarify that for us. Yeah. Well, I will see, Akhi. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of factors to take into consideration. No. I think next time, right, uh, it will definitely have to be maybe at a bigger No, venue. definitely. But but let's yeah. say all that is done because we all, the people, you're going to break their heart. <laughs> right? It's like, no, the Sheikh is not coming back. And so, um, you know, and we have to also... Now, let, me, let me get over the trauma then, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, what happened at the airport was, was pretty huge. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah, you got you to you yeah. talk to us about that. Yeah, I spent like nine hours there. I don't want to go into too much detail, but you know, everything happens for a reason. Alhamdulillah, yeah. Rabbil Alameen. But even then, Alhamdulillah, Allah was overwhelmed with the support of the attendees. And the wow. fact that on, on such short notice, they... Filled out the homes of Allah Azza wa Jal. Honestly, that was very, very pleasing to see. Yeah. And I mentioned this as well, and I'll say it again. One thing that really, really impressed me is what happened at uh, New York City, Brooklyn. Mm. Right? You had one of the biggest games of the year. LeBron James was in town. I don't even watch basketball like that. <laughs> I've never watched a basketball game from start to finish. Even when I wasn't practicing like that. We never watched it. It's not a big thing there in the UK. I think, I think I'm yeah. the same way. I don't yeah. think I've ever watched. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you had the Brooklyn Nets playing against the Lakers. So you had that Muslim guy, what's his name? Um, Kyrie. Kyrie, Kyrie. Yeah. Kyrie Irving. And you had uh, LeBron James, who only comes to the East Coast, they told me once a year or something. So that was the biggest game mm. that was taking place in the Barclays Center. Right? And this is in NYC. The message is not far, Masjid Taqwa, a monumental uh, message that is full with history, right? Historical. Rich with history. We walked past Maghrib time and the event is after Isha. Yeah. Like there's an hour and a half away, right? We walk past the Barclays Center and people are lining up to watch this basketball game. SubhanAllah. They're going to be spending the night in a lahu and la'ib. Yeah. Right? Toying around, wasting the time watching non-Muslims running around, right? And something that is not going to be beneficial. Yeah. However, I was told by Maghrib, the masjid was packed. Mm. They, you had the Muslims lining up to get into the masjid while you have the non-Muslims at the Barclays Center. Like if somebody said that to me maybe before my American trip, the Muslims are going to be lining up to enter into the masjid. I would have laughed at him. Akhya, I'm telling you, in the UK, and I need to go back to the Brits <laughs> and tell them you guys got it Shout wrong, man. Shout out to the UK all the time. Yeah, yeah I'm saying. Wallahi, Wallahi, man. Guys, we have that. such a negative perception of American Muslims. Wow. Wallahi, it's really bad. I'm not even talking about just one group of people. I think this is maybe what a unanimous agreement amongst conservative Muslims, who are the majority, right, over there, from whatever madhab they are and whatever background they come from, they will look at America as finished. Mm. Right? They will look at America as finished. Even recently, one of the brothers said, when you go and to, when you go to America and you see this personality, tell him that all the Muslims, we're not just talking about one strand of Islam yeah, yeah. or one particular school of thought. Right. Tell them they are in unanimous agreement that his positions on the LGBTQ is unacceptable. Wow. It's soft. Make sure you tell him that if you do run into him, <laughs> right? And um, like it was Ajib, like when we see some, you can't blame them to be honest, right? Yeah, no, I ble- a lot of us probably agree, mm. honestly. Yeah. We're, we're on the UK Like when you see a leading know. Muslim figure, right? Uh, coming out and supporting the first 
Yeah. Uh, hijabi, yes. playboy, oh. whatever you call that, right? And he's supporting her. We're thinking, the leaders are behaving like that. What do you expect from yeah. the rest? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. that thing I remember caused a big fiasco in the UK. Yeah. That think, shocked them. Absolutely was, shocked I them. I think I was the same guy who canceled Jumar to go to a, a Jewish synagogue to give condo- So it's, it's, it's deep. And so yeah. those sentiments, they're totally understandable, hmm. right? Um, yeah, I would lie, we can't argue with you. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a no, lot but, of But one thing I have taken away is that there's still a lot of there's fear a lot in of the Muslims. Fear. Yeah, there's potential here. Right. Huge potential, but huge we, potential. Yeah, we, need, we gotta wake up. But that's also all. I think the it's different. The UK and the US is mm. two different worlds. Oh, yeah. Big time. Yeah, in yeah, the yeah sense definitely, that definitely. That was much easier in the UK. And and the, the Muslims lot, are to get, you know more Muslims more closer to so one your another. Da'wa, well. Generally speaking, the Muslims all agree kind of what the, what the people in UK right, say. Right, right, right. LGBT is not, but here you're dealing with a lot of non-Muslims. Forget about the Muslims, but the non-Muslims that we deal with on a day-to-day basis, that we work with, that we go to school with. So a lot there's a lot of factors. Not yeah. I'm not talking about the I'm not talking about the people that okay this stuff, but I'm talking about just in generally yeah. in, in general. Just the uh, re- average person. The average person, the amount of non-Muslims we deal with, and they're thinking, how can I go about this and in, in, a, in a way of wisdom and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, there's just a lot more not offending people. Um, and no, nah, and here it's like if you get canceled here, you actually lose your job, and so there's there's a lot more. No, nah, like here the, the cancel yeah, culture we, is actually real in America. Yeah, we you don't know the cancellation culture in uh, the UK. The U- but here it's like you actually lose your job. You yeah, know, nobody's hiring you, so it's you're blacklisted. Yeah, yeah. So this it's, is a different monster in the US. If, uh, <laughs> The next, um, is, so you know, and b- back in the days before social media, everyone when you used to go to uh, Mecca and Medina for Hajj and Umrah, you know, they would meet other Muslims and they would ask them, "How is your place? And how is your home? What's mm-hmm. going on with the Muslims there, the community?" And that was their form of like news, international mm-hmm. news. So we ask you, um, what's tell us about the Dawa scene in general in the UK. Um, what do you think, what would you say are the three biggest obstacles? Hmm. Yeah, the three biggest uh, obstacles in the sense where you know, the problems that we're dealing with, yes. like the ideologies yes, that yes, are out yes, there. Or the big... Well, hmm. I think at this moment in time, a uh, big fitna is the whole LGBTQ stuff. Hmm. Uh, and also feminism, right? But um, alhamdulillah, we have brothers who are trying to uh, challenge a lot of these afkar, a lot of these... Ideological sentiments, right? So it's being dealt with, um, and maybe you could see, you could say, right, this this whole liberalism of watering down the religion. Right. It's not as bad as America, but it is on the rise. Alhamdulillah, I thank Allah Azza that there are du'at are really dealing with this, right? In the masajid that go out and do khutbas, right? Uh, they keep the uh, Muslims close. Yes. By constantly advising them and admonishing them. Right, mm-hmm. uh, and they tend to kind of like have their freedom a lot more than maybe other places, right? So I thank Allah Azza for that. Alhamdulillah. You know, so ideological uh, basis. Um, what, what is? I know we, you know, you started this tour in the United States. I know before you did one in the UK. What was your inspiration? Like, what got you moving? Like, yo, like I have to do this. Okay, I think there's a number of factors, right? Like, I've now been back uh, in the UK. Uh, for a couple of months no. for the first time in like six years yeah um, I've been receiving emails from universities I think the tour that you're referring to is the university tour right where I went past yeah, yeah, yeah. 27 secular universities even though the feminists and the homosexuals tried to get some of my programs shut down so I just want to thank all those brothers who really stood firm stood firm now and, uh, and made these programs happen because a lot a lot of khair came out of it it really really did right one of the uh, things that really pushed me to do this is that it may well be my one and only opportunity where I can visit the universities. Okay. Right? Because all these years I've been abroad, and normally the ISOCs, you guys mm. call the MSA, they have programs in, uh, in around maybe what, September, October, November, yeah. and then they have another set of events maybe in February and March. And, um, uh, and I would normally be abroad in this period, yeah. studying in Al Medina, right? So, because I got accepted to my masters in uh, in Jamaat Al Imam Riyadh, it was like uh, I might not have this opportunity again. So I might as well exhaust my resources and my time to benefit the people 
and to really get to them. Yeah. Because if you think about it, the universities, right? Um, yeah, a lot of them, they've never studied uh, Islam. And there's many of them that haven't studied Islam, right? If you want to be able to get to a people, the university is really definitely a that's, place that's, for it. That's where people are thinking. That's where they shape their yeah, minds and yeah. their thoughts and their ideologies, right? That's why a lot of, subhanAllah, uh, filth and evil is before up. you c- mm. carry on, for those who don't know, ISOX are the similar form of MSAs yeah. in the UK. Okay, I think, I don't know if it's just restricted there, but that's what they call MSAs. Yeah. Islamic thought, Society. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it stands for. Islamic yeah. Society. Okay, yeah. okay. We don't want them to think it's socks made by Apple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Fun, but go ahead. So this is where one shapes his mindset. Yeah. Right? So um, I know they have a lot of doubts as well. Some of these isms are rampant. It's a breeding ground for kufr, shirk, mm. fahisha, all the different isms. Right, and you got the rainbow team that's extremely active over there, right? Yeah. So if I can get a message to them, hoping maybe I can shape their minds in that one lecture, then be it. Because my objective is to get them to take their religion a lot more seriously and to start seeking beneficial knowledge. Yes. Many people think that you only seek knowledge if you're trying to become the next mufti or the yeah, next yeah, judge or it. the next khatib. No, Habibi, we can't navigate around the doubts. Fitna to shubuhat and fitna to shahwat, except by way of knowledge. Yeah. Right. You can't expect to walk into university. Right, not equipped with the tools to repel all of these doubts, and then come out um, thinking perfectly Islamic. Right, like I said, there's an ideological attack. Absolutely, normative Islam is under threat in these settings, especially. Yeah, you're always being intellectually challenged. Right, so it's very, very important that one is seeking knowledge actively, even while at university, doing yeah. a little bit every day. You're spending so much time learning about Pythagoras' theorem, alliteration, condensation, evaporation. Uh, you've memorized the periodic table, right? Yeah. C2O, H2O. No, Alif Bata. Huh? And it's not Alif Bata. That's, 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 that's not, you know, it's not nice. Wallahi. Even when no. you think about your existence in this world, why Allah founded you, right? Mm. We had to learn about His religion no. so that He can better our ibadah, so that we can then mentally function. I'll put it like this. I'll spell it out like this to mentally function accordingly. With all the challenges of life, you need knowledge. That's powerful. Why do you see so many people depressed? Right? They go through some trouble and they start reverting to maybe what alcohol to help them deal with these underlying issues that they have, thinking that, okay, the alcohol or the drugs or the music is going to get me through it. I always say they drink to forget, we do dhikr to remember, right? SubhanAllah. Knowing how to deal with our problems. Mm. I always say to brothers, if I didn't take away from the 10 years that I spent abroad other than this one point, which is how to deal with our problems, and that would have been enough. And it boils down to beneficial knowledge. Yes. Right? That's basically the core solution in a lot of that which we face. Mm. No. Yes. This is, there's a t- type of knowledge you have to learn as a Muslim. And that's your basic deen. You need to know how to pray. You need to know proper aqidah. You need to know uh, tezkia, you need to know who Allah is. You need to know who the Prophet Sallallahu is. These are things that you have to know. This is not optional. If you want to be a Muslim, you have to know these things, right? And the, when you do learn it, it will empower you. And we always say this. That's a true empowerment. Because then you don't have to rely on your mom and dad and if the information's correct or not and you, you're not sure. And now you're gambling your akhirah based Sorry. off of, I don't know. You know what this person knows. Doing a trial and error. Ah, yeah. you know, and so that's that's not something we want to do. So, uh, you know, we, we, we spoke about the people a lot, but like we mentioned, the du'at, du'at need to be addressed here as well. You know, uh, Minnesota has a, has a great hub for students of knowledge that go and they traverse back and forth from the Mamlaka, they traverse from Egypt, all these places. And so, we need to also address them. What would you say in terms of encouragement, you know, for them as well to kind of step mm-hmm. up and do the job? Well, uh, yeah, one, th- uh, uh, you know, one statement of Ibn al-Qayyim, rahmatullahi alayhi, which really, really inspired me when I first started speaking about these isms and also the whole LGBTQ stuff, right? And I always try to uh, keep it before my eyes, right? It's when he said, لا تستصعب مخالفة الناس والتحيز إلى الله ورسوله سبحان الله ولو كنت وحدك right? do not see it as a burden siding with Allah عز وجل as Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم right? even if it means that you're going to end up opposing the people 
Uh, and that is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is with you. Even if you're by yourself, he says, And that is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be by your side. He'll be there supporting and aiding you. No. Right? It really, really wasn't easy. I think it was like a whole year we were trying to figure out how much can we actually say to enlighten the Muslims with regards to uh, the LGBTQ community. And I just want to make something very clear, just in case somebody wants to misconstrue what I'm saying. I'm not saying we have to incite violence or mm. harassment towards any minority group or anyone in fact. We're just here to quote. I don't have my own views and, and opinions. I just quote, you know? Yeah. I just convey. Yeah. Right? Just to make that clear. You guys have Fox News here, right? That cuts things <laughs> out and, and uh, spreads it and what's 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 your similitude of Fox News? What do you guys have? We have uh, the Daily Mail. The da- Channel 4, we call them. <laughs> Channel 4. <laughs> <laughs> One of the worst news tabloids out there. SubhanAllah. Right. Give you guys a hard time, huh? Well, you know, they recently got, not so long ago, they got sued for a lot of money. I hear. So we kind of like use that just in case a reporter tries to message us. Ah, uh, be careful. <laughs> yeah. What the Muslims got uh, out of it, you yeah, know? We're good, buddy. Mal are all them brothers. Yeah, I mean, they I ended mean. Up fr- they ended up clearing everybody's name. They actually fought back. SubhanAllah. And made sure that their names were cleared. Yeah. And even recently, some sister tried to try to come after me, right? Yeah. And I just sent her all of this. I was look, we'll take the same route, you know? <laughs> you want to you wanna take us on? You know, bring it on, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So alhamdulillah, we have things in place just in case they try to uh, take things out of context. MashaAllah. So anyways, uh, the point of the matter is I'm not here to incite violence towards anyone. I'm just stating facts, right? Uh, this really, really helped me. Uh, you know, consulting people for a whole year, we're speaking to solicitors, how we can wear things and so on and so forth, right? And even uh, we put this uh, disclaimer at the beginning of our videos. Okay. Right? And alhamdulillah, not a single video of mine has been taken down. Okay, not yet. Right? And I've spoken <laughs> about all this stuff. Because I don't incite violence anyway, I'm just there stating facts. And this statement as well, wallahi, I remember the first khutbah that I gave uh, in a masjid uh, at West London, where I delivered this khutbah. I remember, Allah, the, the brother was actually terrified of me speaking mm. about this topic. Yeah. Wow. And then uh, I sometimes listen to his voice not before and after. It actually just cracks me up. You know? <laughs> and um, he is a lovely brother. But of course, there's an idara. There's an yeah. administration that you have to deal with. And uh, sometimes, uh, out of fear and concern, they may request certain things not to be spoken about. And just yeah. That's everywhere. That's everywhere. Uh, SubhanAllah, you know, the reaction was really positive. I remember my brother came up to me and he said to me, May Allah protect you from what about what, what is about to happen, you know? <laughs> SubhanAllah. <laughs> I was like, uh, SubhanAllah, you know, the video went out and it went absolutely viral. SubhanAllah. Uh, it was a khutbah. And I mentioned a statement right at the beginning. Mm. And I sometimes think to myself, like I was able to go to a couple of countries and no trouble came out of it. Of course, I came to America. I had that trouble there. But even then, it was against all odds. Mm. Right? It was against all odds. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, when I, uh, when I got the visa, nobody was expecting it. No, but everyone was saying, nah, you, yeah. out of all people, you're going to get it, no chance. Everybody wrote me off, but one thing we have is Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah. Yeah. Right? And he says, be and it becomes. Right? So I just want to advise the brothers right, to just do the right thing. Fast. There's, a, there's, there's a way around it. We just yeah. got to be smart. Yeah. And, um, and not to shy away from speaking the truth Otherwise the truth is going to die You know Ibn Al-Qaim has a very powerful statement where he said إِذَا ضَعُفَتُ السُنَّةَ قَوِيتِ الْبِدْعَةِ Ibn Ibn Taymiyyah Rahmatullahi Alayhi says وَكُلَّمَا ضَعُفَ مَنْ يَقُومُ بِنُورِ النُّبُوَةِ فَشَتْ فِيهِمُ الْفُجُورِ وَمَا إِلَى ذَلِكِ وَالْفَسَادِ وَالْبِدْعَ وَالْإِلْحَادِ And things like that if, if those who call to the truth I mean they enlighten the people with uh, The prophetic way of doing things right uh, become less and less you will see the opposite taking a stronghold SubhanAllah. right you will see that become extremely widespread wickedness fujur right innovations apostasies right a misconstrued understanding of the religion yeah right yesterday i was telling the sisters we have feminism that uh, took over the world right yeah in many different places uh and then now we have a new knee-jerk reaction of that with the red pill movement and both of them mm. they are not in line with Islamic values and guidelines. And I made it very, very clear that the reason why we have, well, one of the reasons as to why a system may turn towards feminism is simply because she's come across men, right, who may use Islam to justify some of their un-Islamic 
actions and behavior. Yeah. And Islam is free from that. Just because you've seen that, that doesn't mean you need to move away from Islam exactly. towards these ideologies, right? And again, it goes back to knowledge. If you had the knowledge with regards to what is right and what is wrong, you will pull him up, Akhi. You know, your husband can't, you can't be treating me like that. Right, right. That's not Islamic. Does that make sense? And I could see, and it, that really affected him. Got to be honest here, right? Uh, so they're turning to this simply because the haq is not there. Yes. Enough people need to be there yes. talking about the status of woman in Islam, mm -hmm. her rights, her Islamic rights. And this is clear as daylight in the, in the, uh, in the Quran and Sunnah. No. Even the, the, the scholars, they say, making something that is already clear, or should I say, let me rephrase that, explaining something that is crystal clear is actually problematic because you're going to struggle. If I say to you now, uh, can you, uh, yani is, is the sun out? Or is there daylight? And yeah. can you explain to me that there's daylight? Like how, how are you going to explain that to me? Yeah. Huh? It's clear as daylight. Or if the moon is out, oh, can you tell me how, is, is the moon out or not? Any things yeah. like that. So it's very clear in our religion. And it shocks me that it actually requires elaboration. <laughs> right? Yeah. So yeah. brothers, you know, <laughs> do something about it by you know, calling to that which is correct. Even look at the LGBTQ movement. Mm. I've been saying this everywhere yeah, I go. They're strong. Actually, they're strong, even though they're a raindrop in the ocean compared to everyone else. Yeah. They're a minority within, within, within well, a minority. That's true. And everyone's afraid of them. Exactly. <laughs> Why? Why though? And that is because they are, uh, yani, the members of this LGBTQ movement, they're actively involved. They're doubt. Some the of them are willing to die for it. Exactly. And you see these images akhi, of men akhi, wearing whatever, right? Yeah. Women clothing and, you know, being, you know, like dogs, they're being held. These are pictures, I'm just quoting by the way, right? They're proud, yeah, right? Yeah. They're unapologetic of what they stand for. It's they're probably. propagating that. But we Muslims are not necessarily doing the exact same thing, right? Jamming tactics and uh, fear mongering uh, methods have been used to shut us down. When in reality, you guys have the First Amendment. That's true. Freedom of speech, Akhi. That's true. Well, I can't tell my son now what Al Islam is. You don't have to say, I believe this. Akhi, Al Islam says this. Allah Azza wa said this in the Quran. These are our values and our morals. Yeah. Let's stick by them. If you don't, they're going to go to these schools who are ready to indoctrinate them, right? Confuse them, and they come home questioning which pronoun shall I use next. Does that make sense? Yeah. Allah, you know, it's Nas'al Allah al-Afiya. We're already having this, this issue. Mm -hmm. At least you know it. Um, and I think that's one of the big issues is that the brothers, we're not doing our job. We're not, we're not doing our job, you know, and it's, it's out of intimidation. We're intimidated by them. Um, and th that has to do with the lack of faith as well. Yeah. You know, once you're intimidated by the people of, you know, the kuffar and the batin, this is a lack of faith. And so what we need to do is we need to, and this is, we're going to talk about this as well, that all the way down, mm. because there's an internal aspect of Islam that we leave off. And memorizing Mutun, which is great. Uh, we almost got, again, like low-key, some people were thinking in our last podcast that we were against people memorizing the Quran. So we're not yeah. against people memorizing the Quran, but we have I'll a big... Debunk him right here, yes. huh, if you believe that. Huh? <laughs> we, the <laughs> people, because, because the issue with Minnesota is we put an emphasis on memorizing the Quran, nothing else. Mm -hmm. And, that's and that's so the, the person that's memorizing the Quran... He's an atheist. Memorize the Quran, he's a drug dealer. Memorize the Quran, look at the way he talks and walks and he wants to behave like the Kufar. So obviously that's an internal aspect yeah. missing and we're going to talk about that inshallah. And before we move on to anything else, I just want to point out something that Umar al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he mentioned in the Hudaybiyah uh, tree, right? Treaty, yes. He came out and he said to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Alasna ala al-haqi wa hum ala al-baatil. Aren't we upon the truth and they are upon falsehood? وَقَتْلَانَ فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَقَتْلَانَ فِي النَّارِ mm. And those who died amongst us, they're in the Jannah and their, their ones are in the hellfire. Right, he said this twice. Firstly to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his response was وَلَنْ يُضَيِّعَنِي اللَّهِ Allah is not going to forsake me. And then he came out to Abu Bakr because he was, he was angry. Right? فَأَعْرَضَ مُتَغَيَّضًا Right, he went away, you know, filled with anger and عيل, you know, as they say in Somali. Right? And then subhanAllah, he said the same thing to Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Alasna ala al-haqi wa hum ala al-baatil. Mm. Are we upon the truth and they are upon falsehood? Right? And then he said, Allah Azza wa is not going to forsake the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? Uh, brothers, are we not upon the truth? Wallahi, we have the haqq. Uh, yani, aren't they upon the baatil? Why? 
Are we scared of propagating the truth? Allah's name is Al-Haqq, right? And just to point out as well, Allah will raise you for speaking the truth. Ibn Al-Qayyim would say, Al-Rif'atu la takunu bi mujarrad al-ilm bal bi tiba'i al-haqq wal amal bihi. Rif'a, Allah is not going to raise your status for just having knowledge, but rather by following the truth, right, and acting upon it, doing that which is right, brothers and sisters, right? So knowing yeah. is not enough. Yeah, it's not enough. And of course, we've got to be wise. We have to choose the right time and whatever, right? But sometimes what happens is this card is used to just remain silent and not say anything up until you see the batil, <coughs> the falsehood, uh, taking a stronghold right before your eyes and shaitan is to whisper, Akhi, don't say anything, you're going to get cancelled. Akhi, what are the expense of the haq now deteriorating? SubhanAllah. People losing their religion and their faith. Yeah, yeah, Isn't yeah, that yeah. exactly what's happened in America? <laughs> Due to some of the positions that we've taken. Yeah. Up to the point now, well, I, I was told, SubhanAllah, when I was in the UK, Americans would tell me this. You'd walk through a university campus and you'll struggle to find a hijabi that doesn't have the LGBTQ badge on her chest. SubhanAllah, today a sister emailed me. She goes, I've heard you say this so many times and I just wanted you to know, like we in Minnesota, we're not like that. Look at us, we came out to attend your program, right? In numbers, Akhi, they filled out the masjid. Yeah. It's close to a thousand plus <coughs> after when we kicked the brothers out. Yes. They were like, Akhi, we're not like that. And that makes me so happy, right? Sisters in Minnesota, they have a bright future. Bidnillah ta'ala, right? Just learn about the rights of women. We don't need this yes. feminist, liberalist yes. stuff, right? Even Simone de, Bois, de Beauvoir, who is a founding mother of feminism, she's contradicting herself. Mm -mm -mm. And Allah told us this. Uh, anything that comes from other than that you're going to find into contradictions and I mentioned this in my lectures and I'm going to keep mentioning it the contradictions within these uh, ideologies uh, in these ideologies you know wow. man we could we could keep going at least sorry guys I'm just uh, no 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 this is good no, I think the listen, alien inside of me on. after what happened uh, yesterday we need it we need it we need it and so one of the things yeah. too is that we have the numbers. Mm. We have the resources. What we're missing is like a basic akhlaq and organization. Yes. This is our <laughs> issue. Yeah. Yesterday was a big showcase of that. Yeah. May Allah forgive us. Yeah. Um, we're, all, we're all gonna make mistakes. We're yes. gonna learn from it. And today the light ta'ala is going to be a success. Uh, inshallah. inshallah. But what we'll say is also, and I, I wanna highlight this, that we do have sisters here that do hold it down. Right. And they held it down and yesterday. They held it well. down, yeah. alhamdulillah. And so we ask Allah to preserve and protect our sisters, mothers, uh, aunts, and, and daughters all over the world. Right? We, we want Allah to uh, accept from us and to bless us and to forgive all of us. And Idris, you've been in the da'wah for a minute. What do you think is one of the big issues for buckling down and speaking the truth? Well, there's a lot of worldly affairs mm. ties to the da'wah. Yeah. Um, Talk about it. If somebody wants to start doing da'wah, I think one of the first things they do, and this, I don't know if this is the, the UK as well, but in America especially, they, they start an organization. And when you start an organization, it's your target now. It's easier to make you a target. It's easier to get you canceled. And so we see that a lot. Like business and da'wah are tied here mm -hmm. in the West a lot. Um, yesterday, the brother, nobody was charged, free of charge. And everybody, and everybody came. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> in the West, you'd be getting charged $50. SubhanAllah. So if, if, if you're charging people $50, you, you're going to watch what you say. Mm. You know, your money mm. is tied to the da'wah and so on and so forth. So I think that's one of the problems, one of the biggest problems we face. Um, also, this idea of wisdom, wisdom, wisdom is something else that we suffer in the U.S. Every da'i is always talking about, Ah, you got hikmah, hikmah. Hikma. When in reality, sometimes you need to tell people the, the blatant truth. That's it. Naam. And people have appreciated that. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I asked the sisters yesterday, do you want me to go around the bush or shall I just be upfront with you guys? Naam. And you can see they really appreciated it. Yeah. You could hear like, yes, yeah. you know, from the whole crowd, subhanAllah. They don't hear that a lot. Huh? They don't hear that. All, the, all, all the speakers they listen to is, is the opposite. They, you know, they beat around the bush. They, they kind of want them to stay in the same place almost. It's like stagnation. That's nah. what they promote. Nah. You no, know? we and don't want you to. People have become of tired of that. No, we're tired. They, they, no, they now it's like Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Like more people are like, you know what? Because it's like once you start to taste, you know, the deen and like it's the true iman. You're like, yeah, whatever <laughs> I was on before, <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Hadan yeah. <laughs> alihada, yeah. yeah. right? Yeah. So this is is, is a ni'mah too that we have this, and we should always be grateful that we have this, you know, basira. You know, if you have it, in, uh, if, you ha if you are grateful, Allah will increase you in it. 
And if you're not grateful for it, and and I, that's the difference now. between a lot of du'at and a lot of teachers. A lot mm. of a lot of the youth today they go for these motivational talks. Yes. They come back when their iman is over for another motivational talk. Um, now imagine people who charge money for that. Yeah. Like this is it's almost like a crack up in a <laughs> You're gonna come back to me when your when your when your iman is low. I'm gonna charge you fifty bucks. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you another hit. It, huh? <laughs> I'm gonna give you another hit. It. Nah, it's you're gonna come back again. It's really what it is. Where as a teacher, he teaches you yes how to lift yourself, how, how to lift how to yourself, fish, how nah, to take care of yourself. Nah. So we have a lot of people who are on that um, way rather than actually teaching in, in Minnesota, especially you know, and that has a lot to do with Allahi, with the timing mm. of a lot of things I think everybody thinks that People are just lazy No, the timing A lot of the tulab Were studying The past 10 years Yeah Right? Man. And they're just coming back <laughs> mm. So th- There's that There's a disconnect in our community Between the elders And the youth So yeah. there's a lot that goes on That people don't actually pay attention to Somebody in the UK Might not know All of the context And so mm. it's easy for them to just say America's finished Or Yeah, yeah um, like there's a lot of <laughs> as the Prophet said, yeah. right? Right, right, right? Hearing something is not like seeing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta hear it for the right yeah, people yeah. sometimes. The people no, that are on the ground. No, That's why no. we're asking you about UK yeah. because we're not in the scene. And so, Alhamdulillah, thank you for the clarification and the insight. So, you mentioned something about the Quran, right? No, yes. The memorization. Yeah. The hith of the Quran, yeah. which is, is, is virtuous, is meritorious. Mm. No Ashaq. one disputes that. Ashaq. And we encourage that. Yes, we always yeah. encourage it. However, when that's the only thing that's our focus and we're not teaching the deen and there's no fahm, mm. there's no fiqh, right? You faqihu fi deen. If Allah wants good for you, he gives you understanding of this religion, right? I know a lot of people who memorize Quran and they don't know the fiqh of wudu, the salah. They have never studied this. And so for them, you can see easily there's a big gap in their castle to where shaitan can yeah, penetrate definitely definitely you see so the people of the quran before used to know the deen and mm-hmm. they used to practice the deen yeah. and they used to implement it but now we have people who know the quran but they don't know the deen mm-hmm. and it's a musibah Sahih. right and so this is from the angle we're coming at we love our we love our you know ahmed burhan and them shout out to them I know he's in Medina right now. Yeah. Barakallah fi him. I love his citation, by the way. Yes, it's, it's, you it's can't take it G-man. away. Sheikh Abdul Nasser is all I Abdul Nasser. No, I we have to give, we have to give a know? proper, you know, he doesn't get a lot of uh, recognition. Abdul Nasser? Well, he doesn't. He doesn't get a lot of recognition. Guys, should I tell you something that really touched me? Yeah. Really, really touched me. I said it yesterday at our private sitting in the evening after that craziness. <laughs> at least that brought some khair out of the night, you know? Yeah. I was watching the uh, Quran competition that you guys recently had. Yes. I think it's the national, or is it international? Which one? The US. The one that. Uh, is it to be Sheikh Bashir. Abdullah Bashir won. Uh, no, it's That's the U- Kuwait, isn't it? No, the US one. The one that. They okay, okay. The US. Was it Tibia? No, there was one in Minnesota. There was one no, in Minnesota. The US one. The yeah. sh- oh, Shatabi. 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 Is that the one no, he won? I think, I think yeah, it's, yeah, in Amer- yeah. it's America, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's that's I, I just sometimes, you know, like to put these things on and listen to different citations. I love the. The melody that the Minnesotans yeah, have. Alhamdulillah. Like uh, Ahmed Burhan sounds similar to his little sister. Oh, seen that little clip going around. Shah Abdul Nasir. And then the rest of the brothers, they've got like a very similar melody, which I personally fell in love with. No, no. So I was listening to the, uh, the competition. Sheikh Hassan Saleh, I'm a big, big fan of. Mm. Sheikh Hassan Saleh said something right at the end. The dawn. That made me stop whatever I was doing and I just put it on replay. You know, more than once. He said, everyone that participated in this Quran competition, um, were either the direct students of Sheikh Walid or the students of those that Sheikh Walid taught. Subhanallah. Right? And this man has knowledge. Allahu right? Allah. I heard he came and nobody knew who he was. He started teaching. And not just Quran and Qiraat, but he was teaching Islamic knowledge. The yeah, Qiraat yeah. I heard was just maybe like a side thing. Yes. And he was Allah, teaching. Yeah. May Allah Azza wa Jalla preserve him. Mm-hmm. And I haven't met him yet. We're going to be meeting him today. And I just want to honestly. Yeah, we have. He has established the Minas- Islamic University in Minnesota. Yeah. And subhanAllah, look what Allah Azza wa does with a person of knowledge. He uplifts a whole state. No. Right? A whole state. Because I heard Minnesota was just a place of snow, yani. <laughs> and they paid the Somalis to move here, right? That's what I heard. I, I, think, I think the first one was paid well. Everyone else <laughs> after that, if you weren't from his tribe. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, look, look what happened, subhanAllah. Look what happened. When we think Minnesota, one of the first things that comes to mind is Quran. Mm. Right? But uh, 
You know, I always look at the issue of Qur'at, you know, from two angles. You got right wing and left wing. You got people who after finish the Qur'an, they jump straight into Qur'at, memorizing Shatibi, uh, Shatibiya. Yeah. And, um, and Akhi, Sihar gives Akhana and Grana, he doesn't know how to wash his backside. SubhanAllah. Doesn't know how to make wudu. Doesn't know how to do basic stuff. Habibi, Akhi, good. You memorize the Qur'an, now learn the Islamic sciences that are very, very important. And I'm not saying we shouldn't learn the Qur'at. Then you got those, and I was recently hearing this, right? Looking for every way to scrutinize a particular organization. Mm. Uh, he, was st- he started speaking negatively about Qur'at and he used the statement of Ibn al-Jawzi rahmatullahi alayhi where he was talking about Qur'at shahada. Mm. Someone now moving into that and preoccupying himself yeah. on this, that which is more muhim. So belittling the concept of going through Qur'at is another extreme. It's, that's extreme. Right? It's important. There's yeah. a hakam, you know, in there. But I think we, should, we need to be balanced in this uh, and um, look at it, you know, like that. And one more thing I think is yeah. important. So maybe the way uh, around this is to give a lot of concern to Tafsir as well. Recently, a very famous brother who came to one of the classes of, uh, uh, that I did in New York. Very right. big following. He said the following, and I'm hoping maybe this can inspire you guys, right? It was very touching to hear because I told him to go buy Tafsir Ibn Kathir. Okay. Like, I don't like English books. I don't like English books. But that tafsir, honestly, the way it's been written, yes. I love it so much, man. Ibn Kathir is a abridged version of uh, tafsir that's been translated in English. Just to maybe read it, while at the same time you see guidance from a student of knowledge and a sheikh, no. right? Uh, look what he said, right? This is after I told him to go and buy it. He had already had it in his house, but he didn't realize. Because SubhanAllah, Habibi, Allah inspired my heart last night. I started from volume one and wallahi, I've learned so much about Surah Fatiha already. Like the value has shot up even more, alhamdulillah. Inshallah, my intention is to learn more and read more every night. I shoot over questions for sure. Zakallah khair for being available to help. And he asked, how did Ohai go? Right? So uh, he was touched by just reading Surah Allah Fatiha. Allah. Allah it's it's the sweetest well. maybe $200 that you're going to spend. Go buy that Tafsir Ibn Kathir. Real, real nice. You'll find it in probably just about every message they have it. But it's there like as if it's there for show, you know? People don't touch it. Investment in your deen mm. is much more mm. than the dunya because you're investing your akhirah. So people sometimes they think about the two hundred dollars and they're like, ah, that's too much. But they'll buy Yeezys. Balenciaga. Balenciaga. Bal- is it Balenciaga? I don't know. But I that know. sounds like lunch. Yeah. It sounds like a lunchable. Doesn't matter. I mean, they got recently canceled, right? <laughs> they recently canceled. <laughs> <laughs> so, alhamdulillah. Um, the next uh, question I want to ask you about is hijra. People, you know. After all the issues we spoke about, the Minnesota shout out, uh, the USA, people are like, you know, I want to leave this place. I want to go where Abu Taymiyyah is. I want to go where Ustad Abdul Rahman Hassan is. I want to be where the Ikhwa are. I heard Birmingham was the place to go. I'm going to make hijra. <laughs> what would you say about that? Um, somebody leaving, you know, um, first, o- first off to Muslim countries. Yeah. And then what would you say about places like uh, certain pockets of the UK? Uh, I think when uh, speaking about this issue, we have to be sensible, right? Like, I personally don't want to bring up my daughters. Mm-hmm. Alhamdulillah, bless me with two Allah beautiful Allah. daughters. Allah. 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 I, I don't want to be bringing them up Allah. here Allah. in this kind of environment. While at the same time, Akhi, I need to uh, be sensible. I need to be smart. Realistic. And realistic as well. And how I go about dealing with the situation, right? Because um, the world is not how it used to be before. Even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? Um, when he went to migrate to Al Medina, he did his due diligence, right? Did his research. He went to find out is it okay for us to actually move there? Yeah. Right? Um, he did that. So it's important that, you know, we don't just khalas leave. I know there's the aspect of tawakkul, which is very, very important. Yes. And I always go on about the importance of a tawakkul. However, there are asbab as well that you need to take, right? It's not just as simple as packing your bags and going to the Khalij, <laughs> right? Akhi, brothers have told me, my own cousin who lives in Qatar recently told me that this brother, subhanAllah, got into an accident. Yes. Just a little bit, you know, touched. And then he started raising his voice at the sister. She kept quiet. She took his number plate and the guy just got shipped out. He didn't realize that she was actually a princess. Qatar. Whoa. Oh, man. Huh? They took him to the police station. Nothing. No kalam. You're gone. Imagine that, Denise. <laughs> Princess is, is, is deporting you. <laughs> she didn't even say something. I heard she called her brother works for uh, the police. <laughs> get okay, they, they, they sent him out real quick, you know. Um, so we have to kind of like, you know, uh, 
it's not as straightforward as yeah, it was maybe back in the day complex because you want to say hijra okay hijra means that you're going to now move from the lands of the kuffar to the lands of the muslims mm. with the intention of not coming back and if you do come back you can only stay for three days as a hakam subhanallah how is it even a hijra when you're they're giving you this, uh, an iqam residency that's only for a set period of time does that make sense yeah, yeah, yeah. people have this I, I call it the jeddah dream right <laughs> you want to move to jeddah Akhi, we all do but Akhi, it's not that simple right I tell my family this all of that. Yeah, she's she's got the Jeddah dream. I call it the the Jeddah dream that she has. <laughs> we, we're trying. Look, okay, look, we're going to try and sort it out, but we have to be sensible. We have to be realistic, right? Last thing that I want now, I get moved out or something happens, and you're back to square one. Yeah. In the same country, rather you might think about establishing things. Even recently, his brother who was on this hype, he moved to Dubai, and then he was uh, telling me, "Akhi, I put my tawakkul, I did all this, and I'm this, and everything's going great." in a couple of months he had to leave right and please I don't want anyone to walk away with saying that I'm against hijra we all agree that it's mustahab yes it's highly recommended I personally want to do it but when it comes to saying that it's wajib this requires a body of scholars mm. to come together and speak about the the dynamics that we're facing yeah right someone actually pulled me up and said huh? you're telling people don't do it no I didn't say that I'm for it I want to do it as well that's why I'm moving my family out, inshallah ta'ala, when I start my masters. I'll get a long time there. And it can be in that environment. Right? And of course, you know, things may get hard, but we're going to put our tawakkul in the light. Allah, Allah, Allah makes things easy. Allah right? Allah. So that's the situation. Right? Saying is wajib was something that was recently put out. Right? It was a big thing. Uh, and, and then, because that has implications. That means, yeah. akhi, a lot of people are sinning. You're speaking to what? 4.1 million Muslims in the UK that they must leave and of course I don't know I know uh, somebody who says that doesn't actually mean every individual but uh, it's not that straightforward yes it really really isn't and in Europe how many are there there's like 25.4 million Muslims I believe yeah right you need to take all these people uh, take them somewhere right <laughs> there has to be practical solutions so um, in the meantime uh, we have to kind of like find a way to weather the storm that, if that makes I like sense. That. I like that. Yeah. Uh, weather the storm. The next, uh, you know, issue I want to discuss with you about is, um, you know, Wallahi, we have a lot of things that are happening. And like, I, I want I want to come back to that internal factor, right? Um, diseases in the, uh, of the heart are easy to attain uh, when you live in the West, right? The West being Europe. America, Australia, all these places. Women are sexualized yeah. and objectified. So when you see uh, all of these so freely and easily accessible on the web, at the gas pump, in, the, in you know, uh, sometimes even in the in the bathrooms, you guys don't call it bathrooms, it's to- toilet, right? Yeah, we, we say bathrooms. You say bathrooms? Yeah. <laughs> 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 <It's> right, <huh? laughs> Where do you think we live, man? No, no, oh, okay. How about pants? You guys don't say. No, we pants. say trousers. trousers. Yeah, I, that's okay. it. You go, the way you guys say it is real corny, okay, because we <laughs> we call pants okay, what you wear inside. Underwear, right? Yeah, underwear. Yeah. I remember a brother told One me. One time that. somebody said, "Take off your pants." I was like, "What?" What's <laughs> the guy trying to say? That means trousers, you know. <laughs> pants. You know? It's, yes. <laughs> okay. This when when the two worlds collide is very Allah Akbar. So that the, the test kids, you know, when you have all access to all these yeah, ills and the diseases. It's, it's very easy to attain and if you don't know how to deal with that your yeah. your heart will be sealed khatam allah ala qulubihim wa ala sam'ihim wa ala basarihim ghishawa you know so these are things that can happen to you and it's step by step so um what do you what would you say about the let's talk to us about what tazkiyah is and the importance of it yeah. especially living in the lands of the uh, non muslims yeah. There's so many statements, subhanAllah, right? Like Ibn Taymiyyah, first, yeah. first just explain yeah. Tazkiyah, what is yeah. that? So Tazkiyah, the way they translate it into okay. English is purification of the heart, mm. right? Uh, we are in need of Tasfiyah and also Tarbiyah, Allah. right? Uh, purification and also cultivation, right? So every single individual is in need of purifying his heart, not just on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis, but I'm talking about on a day-to-day basis, Allah. especially living in the West. We were told that whenever you carry out a sin, a black dot is placed on your heart. Mm. Right? And the way to remove that black dot is what? Istighfar. 
who used to constantly seek forgiveness all the time it's none other than Mr. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he didn't have any past sins or any previous uh, or any future sins right even then 70 times in a sitting 100 times in a sitting us being in this sexualized society where women are objectified they use as marketing tools now to grab your attention right are we not in need of constantly seeking forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jalla without a shadow of a doubt right and even this knowledge that we speak about we can't function without knowledge mm. right we have all these doubts and temptations and the only way around is beneficial knowledge Allah. that's not going to enter into your heart unless you have a pure heart that's true Ibn Taymiyyah uh, alayhi he says uh, what does he say now إذا كان القلب رقيقا لينا كان قبوله للعلم سهلا يسيرا ورسخ العلم فيه وثبت right because if your heart is soft and tender your ilm will find its way easy into that kind of heart. You will see it what settling inside of this heart and you know really taking hold of it. Right? With habit. And then he says, If your heart is hard and rigid, you'll find it way very, very difficult entering into that. Right? So that heart needs to be really, really soft. This is why uh, even you can find on my YouTube channel, I went through ten ways to soften up the heart. And something that Ibn Rajab mentioned, subhanAllah, is really, really powerful. Where he says, um, uh, where he talks about um, how the majority of what the companions and the Prophet so used to do so wasn't so at tatawwa, like doing uh, supererogatory voluntary acts. Yeah. It wasn't that, right? But rather it, it was like rectification of the heart and so on and so forth. And he says that this is actually the afdal than doing a lot of righteous deeds, if that makes sense, right? So we really go out their way. And even if you're a talib ilm, like me, I'm somebody who really loves the sul fiqh, like I love it, sul fiqh. Because Sul Fiqh protects the Sharia. Yeah. Wa surun nusus min al lusus. As Ghudayan Rahimullah Ta'ala mentioned. It's like the gates that protect the nusus, the text, right, from the lusus, from the yeah. thieves. Yeah. Right, figuratively speaking. As I mean, so I really love it. I spend a lot. But actually, sometimes I feel like my heart gets a little bit. Mm. So I need that Tazkiyah book right, right next to me, you know. Yes. Ibn al Jawzi Rahmatullah Ali says, Raitu al Ishtigal bil Fiqhi wa Samay al Halai Kadi Yakfi. He says, he says, like busying yourself with fiqh and just listening to hadith is just not enough to rectify your heart. Right? إلا يمزج بشيء من الرقائق والنظر إلى سير السلف الصالحين It has to be mixed with رقائق, heart softness and also looking into the lives of the people of the past. Right? So there has to be a fair share of tazkiyah. Sometimes you've got brothers. Some brothers actually started referring to them as the mutunists. Right? Mutunists. <laughs> 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 Fortunately, because we have this new wave of brothers mm. who want to completely um, uh, take out of the equation giving lectures, mm. right? And they, they started referring to it as chaotic da'wah. <laughs> like, uh, honestly, it was absolutely ridiculous. Is this in the UK? Some of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're just a minority of people. Uh, when they themselves, okay, it's ajib, 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 right? Like I told you guys before, I go around delivering these lectures. Um, Highlighting to them why they need to seek knowledge. It has to be done through lectures. Yeah. Majority of the people, number one, they're not ideological, and secondly, they don't even know they have to seek knowledge. The majority true. are not That's students true. of knowledge, That's true. and the way you get to them is through these lectures, especially the sisters. Yeah. Because already they don't go to Jumu'ah most of them. Uh, the and so they may never get a reminder, and the only reminder they get is dunya in the mm. schools. They just chase after it. Sometimes okay. their parents are like, hey, hey, we need you to be that doctor, okay? Yeah. yeah. That's it. And so that's, that's all it. she gets. And then what I've noticed is that when nurses and those sort of people, they get in contact with us, du'at, they're like, hey, can you teach me aqidah? I just realized I don't know <laughs> my aqidah. Mm -hmm. And she graduated from medical school. Yeah. That's a long time. Yeah. Imagine you know that. What Imagine that. So, nah. But they'll come to the lectures. They'll come. When there's a lesson, they don't know, that's not for me because I've taken a different career path. Mm. They look at seeking knowledge as like a different <laughs> career. <laughs> Yeah, it's Jama'ah, it's not. Mistake. As you mentioned earlier in the hadith, right? It's faridatun ala kulli Muslim. It's an obligation upon every single Muslim. Yeah. Even the Prophet sallallahu wasallam, and then Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he would give reminders every Thursday. Mm. He reminders he gave. And the khutbah, that's not a metan. Right? There's different ways of delivering a message to someone. Yeah. The end goal na'am is to connect the people to studying Islam exactly. uh, a, lot more uh, a lot more systematically, right? And even if you just went through the Quran, you don't. Uh, yani, that was the minhaj of the uh, uh, the Prophet. He would teach the people the Quran, yeah. and the early generations they would teach the people the Quran, and that's how they would derive the different sciences from, right? So it should not be belittled that somebody is giving a lecture. I've gone round, visit different communities. I see the impact, right? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna read something now. 
it's a private message but hopefully you won't have an issue with it no no brother message me this today right yeah. brother message me this today he said i don't know who he is <laughs> i really don't know who he is he just sent it to me on uh, on twitter sound like shake i apologize for what happened in minneapolis mm. by the way i've received like a lot of apologies maybe somewhat close to 100 apologies <laughs> from brothers and sisters Saying, I, on behalf of Minnesota. This is the sincerity. You know, that shows, they're still well, good in the Ummah, you know, in, in, in Minneapolis. Some decency, yeah, yeah. A lot of decency, I have been listening to your videos for about five years. When I heard you were coming, I was happy to benefit again from you. I'm not currently in Minneapolis. I'll be back in the morning. For whatever it is worth, I memorized the Quran with your motivation. Allah. And I learned Arabic with your motivation. Allah. And I memorized hadith and poems that I wouldn't have if I hadn't started with memorizing the Quran. It was difficult to me in the beginning and when I saw your videos that uh, it was for you uh, when I saw your videos that it was for you as well yeah. it helped me push forward mm -hmm. Allah, I'm telling you they were from lectures and and, uh, you know someone recently said that when he listens to so and so speaker yani he feels motivated to practice but when he listens to my videos he feels motivated to go and seek knowledge mm -hmm. and that's exactly what I'm trying to do right we're trying to get people to start taking knowledge a lot more seriously yeah so some of these brothers who are being referred to as Mutunis, they started taking shots at somebody who goes through Surah Yusuf, for example. One brother, subhanAllah, when I was on, the way, on my way to Manchester, Mr. Furqan, he sent me a whole text message refuting the masjid and telling me that the lecture that I'm delivering about the deception of Iblis is not something I should speak about. Mm. And he's talking about the masjid, they don't have any concern to seek knowledge. And, and you speak about well, I said to myself, this guy, I don't think he's read to be Where, where are these? Where are these? Where do they live? Where does they live in live? the UK. They live in the UK. Like it was ajib because one of the first statements that I was going to mention from Tilbis Iblis is when he said, mm. The first deception of Iblis <laughs> <laughs> is to block the people away from knowledge. Ah, ironic, right? Because says because علم is a light. Yeah. If he manages to extinguish the light, right, he will see, he will, you know, trip them up in the darkness, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, first and foremost, I don't even believe what he's saying about the message. Secondly, <laughs> have you read Tilbis Iblis? We're trying to tell the people, we're trying to encourage you not to start seeking knowledge. Very beneficial book. Very beneficial. To right? go over it, over and over again. Akhi, it's an amazing beneficial. book. Like, I'm thinking, subhanAllah, right? You know, are we reading the same book? Are you even reading? <laughs> right? So that was very, very shocking yeah, to see, honestly. I know. So, uh, lectures of I th wallahi, I looked, uh, I looked at the the UK Dawah scene, and I realized there's a lot of Muslims. Yes, I identified that. Yes. Secondly, a lot of them are not seeking knowledge. They're far away from the religion. Right? We have to also identify the strengths that we have. If we're able to pack out a masjid or a university hall and motivate the people to start taking this journey, then ishil ishil mushkila. But then they'll say to you, it's not about numbers. Just teach us Surah Thalatha, teach Kitab Tawheed, which I do. I've actually taught Kitab Tawheed seven times in the last two and a half years. And I'm on the eighth time now. Allah. I teach in a knowledge college. We go through uh, books, you know, in a systematic way. Recently, a brother, uh, may Allah Azza wa bless him, yeah. right? He, uh, he sent me, subhanAllah, you know, his name is... Uh, I might get offended now if I don't say his name, right? Anyways, this brother, this student of mine. Shout out to that brother, whoever he is. If we don't know you, <laughs> the angels know you, inshallah. His name is Hamza Arafa, right? Mm. He sent me a hundred pages worth of notes. SubhanAllah. A hundred pages worth of notes can be turned into a book, akhi, right? And they were lessons from our Kashf al-Shubuhat. This is the second year. The conditions of takfir and its preventatives, the dangers of it. Nawakil Islam went through it in detail. Twelve mainstream doubts of... Uh, of grave worshipping and I went through a surah sitta yes. a hundred pages of notes that he sent yes. this is what we go through we go through Bulugh al-Maram oh, we go through it in a systematic way right but that's not for everyone you need to there's that's a gap true. there get, get this guy now okay why do I need to seek knowledge this is the point here yeah. is that you have to deliver the deen to the way the people understand it you cannot just say you know uh, everyone come and, and, and listen to uh, you know Usul al and you have to sit down and you need to cross your legs and have your pencil and paper people don't have discipline they don't have that right 
And so there's something that you do for tulab, people that are at the eight, at the level. And then there's some people that you, they need to come through the front door. <laughs> Ach, you need to just get them through the That's door. That's it. <laughs> Ach, who did we have yesterday? Wallahi, we had sisters who don't even wear hijab. Yeah. But they wore hijab for the first time. Allahu Akbar. Right? They wore hijab for the first time. They could, yeah, just bringing them into the masjid. Akhi, billah alayk, wouldn't you go to the streets and start paying people? Mm-hmm. Please come into the masjid. If I had the money. If I had the money, we, we, we would do it. We <laughs> definitely do it. <laughs> so that, there has to be that you know, initiative. And now they're coming to the masjid. Why shouldn't you give them a lecture? I remember the brother was like to me, subhanAllah, one, one guy said to me, Akhi, you shouldn't look at numbers. Even if five people come and attend the class, these are the five people that are going to save the next <laughs> generation. Akhi, if I'm doing that on a bigger scale, what's the problem? Mm. Hundred people are gonna come. Maybe Akhi, twenty people are gonna start yeah, seeking knowledge. Yeah, yeah. right. Subhanallah. Also, um, it's interesting because a lot of people who give a lot of advice and then you should do that, don't do nothing. Mm. <laughs> that's the that's the terrible <laughs> part. It makes sense if it's another da'i that's Allah telling you, Akhi. But it's always that the, guy the, that's the in critics, his grandma's basement. Yeah. They'll do anything. It's always the critics in his grandma's basement. You know, just always typing. That's the guy that's going to tell you you shouldn't it's talk to these kind of people. He has no influence over anybody and he's telling you how to, you know, go about dealing with thousands of people. So. Allah. There has to be a collective effort. Yani all sectors need to be covered. Yeah. Teaching, lecturing, khatib. You know, you gotta be the all round heart softness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very important. Very. We all need it. Yeah, well, I would need it. The mashayikh themselves need the ulama need it. Yeah, 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 that's factual. Remember what Ibn al Jawzi mentioned? Passed me in 597, right? Yeah, 597. He's saying this, and it's not enough. Right? And eventually these brothers are gonna start giving lectures. Huh? <laughs> you know, you'll see it. Even now, I recently saw a thing for where. Anyways, yeah. Well, <laughs> so mm. the next I, I have one question. Yes. For the Ustad. Yeah. Who are, from the non Muslims, who are some people that Muslims look up to? Who are the idols in, in the UK? Non Muslims. You guys look up to LeBron James, huh? <laughs> no, here, huh? here we have. we have. Well, even there's this rapper that everyone started tagging me on. I yeah. think his name is Drew something. Oh, Diri, no. what is his name? Well, I have one. Not Drake? Drake, there's another one. No, no, there's another. He's talking about J- Chicago. Shytown, Shawrack, Dirt, Lil Dirk, Lil no. Dirk. The, the, that's the one. Lil Dirk. Lil Dirk. Yeah, is that what it is? Lil Dirk. Yeah. yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. Here, Last so time uh, I was up to date, everybody was looking up to uh, six five. No, six six, six, six nine. Six <laughs> nine. Six nine. Six nine. The guy with the rainbow hair and the yeah, rainbow yeah. teeth, right? It changes every month. Every month is a new guy. But in the UK, though, who mm. do the youth have kind of? I know. Know. No, it's four players. Nah, so, you, so you see kind of the difference. Like in America, yeah, they have the, the, the girls. The girls have they they're affected by Beyonce oh. and um, Cardi B, right? You guys seen that message about Beyonce? That that tweet yeah. is going around. Yeah, yeah I saw. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I thought she was expired by now. <laughs> she's still around. She's still around. But you, but, but the kids in the UK are affected <laughs> by football players, which is I yeah. think is it's an easier. Sorry, okay, soccer players. Soccer players. Gotta be specific. <laughs> Soccer you guys call it soccer? Call it soccer. No I don't way, know. I don't bro. know any. God. I don't know any celebrity women from the UK. Right There's no Beyonce in UK. No, no, we don't have these girls like running around. So it's much easier to kind of. Like, you know, that's that's a great well, point. I, th- I, I didn't think, think about I th- that. I thank Allah as well for the UK, man. No, so you guys are We're much blessed more in the blessed UK, brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, make the effort. You make the effort. May Allah, Allah make America. I mean, you know, better than the UK. We still have our challenges. Yeah, we have our issues, right. but well, alhamdulillah, you know. This place is a different yeah, beast. No, that's it. that's true. And so the this companionship now is important. Suhbah, yeah. the people that are around you, your sahib, right? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, لا تصاحب إلا مؤمنا Do not befriend mm-hmm. and, you know, companion with anyone except a believer. So talk to us about that. And the influence of, of friends because we talked about the external factors. Mm. Now there may be a guy there. You could easily say Udi Bilay Ibn Shaitan regime. But the, the Shayateen from the Ints, those guys, those ones are tricky. Mm. Uh, yeah, without a shadow of a doubt, like we've been hearing this for years. Our parents have brought us up, you know, make mm-hmm. sure you have good friends, make sure you do this, make sure you do that. Um, like you mentioned, you know, a sahibu sahib. It drags you towards the direction. That's Sahib Allah Mu'min Araju Al Adini Khalile. All the Hadith in the Mamathul Jalis Al Salat, the perfume Salat, and the blacksmith. We've all heard about, right? Of course, this is one of those things that really, really strips you of your Islamic identity. You are on the same madhab, or on the same way as your five closest friends. 
Mm. And these five closest friends are those that are going to pray your janazah. Some of them don't even know how to make wudu, right? Yeah. You gotta see that. They're going to be in your circle, in the front line of your janazah. Gotcha. Right? Your five closest friends. And that shows a lot about you, you know? Um, and it's not just friends that we physically engage with today. We got social media, that's why it's called yeah. Facebook friends, right? You walk outside, how many people can you engage with? 20, 30 people on a day to day basis? But you're online, at home, in between those four walls. One's becoming corrupted by what he just constantly looks at. And this is a new pandemic and the new problem that we have today. Once upon a time, a parent would say, Alhamdulillah, you know, my daughter and my son, they're at home, they're not engaging with any huh? <laughs> bad people. Now they're in between the four walls and they're there. accessing all types of filth and all types of evil. And they're becoming affect affected by it. Even Raghib al-Asfahani said, You don't just get influenced by the people who hang around with you, but even by looking at things. Some of the scholars of the past, they would say, right, don't even look at someone who's lazy. And let me ask you, is it haram to look at someone lazy? No. You're going to get a sin for it? Mm -mm. Somebody who's a bum and just sitting around? No. But it affects you, you know, subconsciously it creeps in. It affects the way you yeah. think and so on and so forth, right? Imagine they would say, don't look at that. I had, a, I had an auntie that called me. She was like, oh, my, 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 my daughter, she wants to um, she wants to start wearing a mini skirt. Because no, a mini skirt is right. You guys have another name for it. Mini skirt is probably right. Just, we have. Oh, you okay. guys have another mini one. You guys call it pants. Are, huh? <laughs> are, you, are you talking about like the skirts? Mini skirts, yeah, and the short skirts. Oh, I didn't think I'd explain mini this. I'm trying not to. It's <laughs> like really, really, I mean, mini yeah, skirts Yeah, I'm, I'm talking bad. about what these uh, girls uh, go to the club wear. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going to say imagine it, but I'll say you don't. <laughs> huh? Don't imagine. Yeah? We don't. Imagine, like my, my daughter wants to wear it. Subhanallah. How did this come about? Mm -hmm. She goes, oh, I, I don't wear it. Her sister's never wore it. But she's asking now Not for this daughter. mini skirt. You said your niece, right? No, no, no. no. I'm mother is telling us. The mother's I'm saying. The mother's okay. saying this. No, because you said my daughter. And now I want people. That's what the no, mother's the, the saying. saying my daughter okay. is, is asking me to right, wear yeah. this. She wants me to buy it for her. And then when I tell her no, she goes, what's the problem? Okay. No one else does in her family. <laughs> Why? Why is this happening? Because she's constantly looking at these fasiqat, mm. fajirat, who have absolutely hijacked her mind. She's just constantly looking at it. And she began to become desensitized to it. She's normalized it now. This, this is how women dress. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, That's so a really interesting point you made though about the salaf would go look at somebody's face to get like an iman boost mm -hmm. just looking at somebody's yeah, face yeah, and then the opposite is also true if you think about it you could look at somebody's face who's a pawn and yeah, yeah. who's a sinner and a fasiq and your iman would drop but we don't even think about that we see these Allah, people that's that's every point. single that's, day that's and looking right imagine befriending with subhanallah this i want to be reminded of allah as well as yeah. you know just by the team you mentioned <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You know, the, the next thing to, to, is to talk about now, and what a great intro to the influence of social media. The Muslims now have access to everything at their fingertips. You don't need to go into somebody's house. Before, if you wanted to sin, you had to go find people, find a location, meet up, you know. And then the only people at that location, they would be the only people that would be exposed to your sinning. Yeah. Yeah, they would know. But today you can do it and broadcast it. Shirk kufr ma'asi has become digital. It can spread like wildfire to the entire world. Millions of people can see it. Now those millions of people become your, against you on the day of judgment or for you. They're witnesses to that crime you committed. That's Allah the afiyah. So now let's talk about the dangers of social media, clout chasing with deed, misinformation, there's people who put up fake ahadith, um, tabarruj, the youthism, you know. So mm. let's talk about that. And then also, should we leave social media or have a collective da'wah approach and utilize it to our benefit? Mm. Very good question, right? I think the hadith that comes to mind is when the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talked about al-kathba allati tablugh al -afaq. Mm. When one leaves his house, he spreads a lie that reaches the other side of the world. Right? Put yourself in the shoes of the companions, right? What were they thinking when the Messenger of told us that told them this, right? They would spread a lie and reach the other side of the world when they lived in the Arabian Subhanallah, Desert. Subhanallah. Now with the era of social media and the emergence of all of these different 
السوشيال ميديا ابس اخي يو سند اوت ون مسج reach the other side of the world mm-hmm. within the space of a couple of moments you can even start a war on social media just ask Donald Trump <laughs> huh? <laughs> and that North Korean whatever oh, right true, yeah. you can start a war on it subhanallah the Messiah told us that was, uh, he saw someone being punished and they put a uh, they put a what do you call hawk. it again the hawk the hawk right um, uh, they put it inside of his the hook the hawk, yeah. the hawk, the hawk yeah. that's the one yeah. <laughs> I think the tiredness is getting to us this yeah, early morning. Yeah. They put it. They 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 put a what is it called? Hook. hook. Uh, they put a hook inside of his mouth, right? And it, it would be torn all the way to the back. Another in his nose, oh. and the third in his eye socket. And his face would be ripped like that, right? And that's because he would spread a lie that reaches the other side of the mm. world. Not checking the information. Everyone just wants to speak for the sake of speaking. Just look what's happening on Twitter now, right? Yeah. You type in Abu Tamia, Every minute, like uh, we've even tried to uh, start refreshing. Literally, every time you fresh something is coming up, and many of them speaking garbage, right? They're spreading lies. You don't have the full picture of what actually happened, and you're just speaking for the sake of it. Yesterday, we saw a, a what do you call it? A chat that was open on Twitter. What do you call it? A space. A sp- mm. Twitter space. At 1 a.m. in the morning, while we were driving, there was 1,300 plus on there. I'm thinking, <laughs> 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 they don't sleep. Right, Shakhlan, they're in this group and they just everyone is just giving their two cents on the whole issue. A lot of people from different parts of the country, different parts of the world. The world yeah. How about Sahda? You know? <laughs> right? Like, what, what is going on? Like, you know, do you see my point? Yeah. You don't just have to speak for the sake of speaking, Akhi. That's right? true. You, you waste Love a son. lot. You waste a lot speaking and you don't need to speak. You do a lot more harm to yourself. That's yeah. the sign of a fool. Uh, he he says something because he feels like he has to say yes, something. Yeah. <laughs> and so before a fool back in the days, they would talk. No one would care. <laughs> Today a fool is a role model, right? <laughs> 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 it yeah. reminds me of something that Mike Tyson mentioned, right? <laughs> Mike Tyson. What did he say? He said, uh, so "Here is." doesn't say much he said social media made you all way too comfortable disrespecting people mm. and not getting punched in the face for it <laughs> right not that i'm trying to endorse this in any way shape or form yeah. of course violence is against the religion um yani punching somebody's face mm. it's a if you fight then stay away from the face back in the day right there's consequences yeah. yeah there'll be consequences we'll, we'll tell that brother yeah you just said that about him go say it to his face right mm. but now just need a keyboard that's it a warrior warrior right <laughs> keyboard warrior this guy Paris. that's it it just writes nobody knows who he is even before i came to the u.s right well after i landed and the, the thing went out i could just random people started speaking <laughs> they're trying to get my thing now i got i got likened to so many different people but i'm on steroids apparently compared to them they said oh how did american <laughs> government let him in it should be sent back okay Okay, say that to the guy's face, okay. Yeah, and just to be yeah. honest, those people need to get sent back. <laughs> we know who they are. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're you're probably not here legally. The papers are running out, and so I think it's a good point to mention is that there are enemies of the da'wah everywhere. Yeah, internal as well as external. But the <laughs> internal bit here is the one we have a trouble with in the America. You guys have a good job of calling people out. Hey, you monophic bruv. And you <laughs> call it. <laughs> right? And you call it out. Coffee, you is in it. Like, whoa, dude, what's going on? In it, yeah. <laughs> right? I, was, I know the different dialects. Trying to impersonate yeah. me, yeah? <laughs> Maybe I am. The nah, brothers have been speaking a lot about the Scousers. <laughs> Somali is sounding like Scousers. <laughs> I met I met the first person who had like a UK accent is when I moved here. I'm from San Diego, which you're gonna be going to soon, inshallah. Yeah. What is what is the thing they always do with the bottle 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 of water? Water, water, (laughs) water. But the people that are against the da'wah is funny because these are people who, um, some of the people we know from Minnesota Mm. got got an education whatever kind of education he got but they went to college and they instead of being open-minded people coming and actually coming with evidence they yeah. spew a lot of nonsense yes right and so a lot of labeling that's right. all they do here they don't and have they, any and, and i think they, they sabotage every khair like they want yeah. to go and attack everything <laughs> that's yeah. what they refer to them in arabic and these, are the, these are the same people that actually had a problem with uh 
Remember when we were trying to stop people from going to the concert? The concert. They, had they a were problem. telling us people, right? Let people go to the concert. <laughs> they said and they're trying to stop you from going to the, the lectures. They said they said These are the uh, people we're dealing with. They, they said that we're causing more fitness mm. by by being out there, and that's against. And today the they're trying to stop people from going to the lectures. So those are the type of people we have. Oh, wow. Alhamdulillah, so they fail, Akhi. Yes. You know, yeah. it's very different what's happening on the ground mm. compared to what uh, somebody is. Uh, what do they call them, Akhi? They've got uh, one of the mashaykh referred to them as something. Huh? <laughs> I must read this out. Yeah, he referred to them as the, the Twitter thugs, mm. <laughs> Instagram idiots, and the TikTok tigers. <laughs> we'll always have something to say about the people who do the work. Just do the work. They will have their reckoning on a difficult day. Subhanallah. Right? At the end of the day, you have to do what you believe is pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jal. Mm. And so do the people that are hosting you. Right? Twitter, th- Twitter thugs. Mm. Instagram That's idiots and TikTok <laughs> tigers. It's, it's definitely befitting. Mm. And, and, so al- and also, just to touch upon the importance of knowledge that you were talking about, mm. that's why knowledge is more, very important. Because not everybody can sit at the table of knowledge. Mm. If we're talking knowledge, not everybody could be at the table. That's factual. A lot of people would have to shut up. That's true. But we deal with a lot of emotions and feelings. Everybody has feelings and everybody has emotions. That's the problem. That's a lot true. of these people have no knowledge. If you ask them, what's the pillars of Islam and Iman? <laughs> Nothing. And they're trying to talk to you about fiqh issues. You know, the I think not. what we should do is, you know, <laughs> what you should do is sit down. <laughs> All right. and no, it's honestly, that's a, the that's a issue yeah. here. Is we, don't, we don't respect authority in terms of the deen here. Yeah, in, that's in, the problem. In the United States. Right, and so now this we have it's been a, it's a norm that you have like medical doctors are given khutbah, mm-hmm. like we call medical doctors with degrees to give khutbah here. Mm-hmm. You see, and then the uh, mm-hmm. subhanallah, the identity of the Muslim is important from our Muslim cultures, and because what it does is it's a constant reminder too. And for us brothers, sometimes we can get away. Sisters can't. They have to like you know they're forced to be in these hijab and niqab and all those things. So we ask Allah to make it easy for us. So just finishing up here, let's conclude. Um, what would you give in like last reminders? Uh, 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 a beneficial last one last thing to say to our Minnesotan uh, brothers and sisters out here. Well, I would say um, uh, there's a lot of khair in the Minnesotans. Honestly, there is. Uh, the fact that you guys came out in so many numbers yeah. honestly it really shows that there's a lot of good in your hearts you could have been doing all sorts of things right on a night like that you could have, you could have been up to a lot of crazy things today youngsters are just sitting at home on TikTok mm. but you chose to put your phones down and you came in order to be enlightened about conservative Islam right uh, and wallahi it really really pleased me that you guys have a lot of khair you know, don't refer to these liberals or these feminists. Yeah. Right. Remember, guys, politics is a filthy game. Mm. Right. We don't need these kind of people to enlighten us about Islam. We have Islam in a balanced way. We really, really do. Right. Yesterday, I know a lot of them were shocked when I went through some of the stats that I found in the Daily Mail about what many British women want uh, in a relationship. Non-Muslim too. Non-Muslim, right? You, you, you heard it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it was shocking. Yeah. And even when I went through some of the rights that women are entitled to, yeah. right? Don't let oppressive Muslim men who might use the Islam as a way to justify their un-Islamic actions mm. be the reason why you end up going left. No, right? We have Islam. It's going to deal with all of our problems, and it's pretty clear. Right? That's the message that I have for everybody. Right? No offense to anybody, but we have our role models, Allah. people that we turn to. Uh, people are asking me everywhere I go, oh, should we take knowledge from Andrew Tate, right? Uh, recently in, in, in New Jersey, they asked us. Even one brother was like, I used to watch Andrew Tate, but the algorithm took me to you. I saw them <laughs> on the real AT, man. Huh? <laughs> I said, of course, Akhi, we, are, we make dua for him that Allah Azza wa Jal frees him from his distress. You know, he's being oppressed, yeah. right? For them to try and accuse him of something that is uh, not backed up by any evidence or proof. Um, it's something that is really sad to see, and this happens to anybody with influence. And then I gave the example of Loon. You guys know Loon, right? Yeah, yeah. Mashallah, man. Uh, that's the example that came to mind after he asked this question. It was all yani, unplanned and unintentional to even speak about this stuff. Anyone who gets influenced, they're going to try and come after him. And that's very well known. SubhanAllah. Right? And without a shadow of a doubt, he has inspired a lot of men to be more masculine. Yeah. Right? However, he's a revert. We're not going to be taking knowledge from someone yeah, who just. He's not, he's not a role model. That's, uh, you know? Yeah. 
May Allah bless him honestly. Like I make dua that Allah Azza wa Jal makes him a da'i you know, and, yeah. uh, and, and grants him beneficial knowledge. Like and imagine and somebody like that who now takes that journey and seeks knowledge and the kind of impact that he could have. And they're trying to shut him down because they know he has that kind of potential. Amazing. However, we say when we're balanced, right? And he, there are people that you go back to for beneficial knowledge. Just like you would go back to the most qualified doctor when you have a medical related issue. That's factual. Right? Does that make sense? Uh, and this is why I've been telling university students just because you don't have the answers, that doesn't mean there aren't any answers. Mm. Does that make sense? If you're a medical student, right, and you go back to Somalia and they start asking you questions about which medicine should I take, you're going to say, I'm not ready. I'm not qualified, right? Yeah. No one in their right mind would leave that profession. The same thing with Islam, right? You don't have the answers, go to somebody who's qualified. Right? Go to somebody who has studied. Right? And there are people like that. No. Yeah? Does that make sense? Yeah. So and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Um, benefit from the people of knowledge. Uh, and can I just say, yeah. I just want to give a shout out to Shaykha Aisha Wazwaz. You guys have her in the Allah Twin Allah. Cities, right? No. Well, I honestly, sisters, uh, she's very knowledgeable. Right? And uh, do benefit from her. Definitely. Honestly, do benefit from her. She has some very good works. Honestly, I really like the podcast that you guys did with her. I think she was pretty balanced. Some sisters may look at this as extreme, as maybe a personality that's out of touch with reality. Yeah. Okay, I guess she was just upfront with you guys, telling you guys what's in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger yeah. with yeah. regards to that, very good questions that you guys asked. I, I personally enjoyed, you know, listening to that and I just want to thank her for it. Yeah. I know her husband is, you no. know, yeah, uh, is a writer, I think shit. he is. I don't know much yeah. about him. But um, may Allah Azza wa Jalla bless that family. Amen, amen, amen. Right, and I was told also that uh, she sent quite a few people to come and attend the program. Yes. Right. May Allah reward her for that. Amen, amen. amen. Yeah. But uh, it was very disappointing for what happened. Hopefully today, bi idnillah ta'ala. So Inshallah ta'ala. Yeah. You know, and we want to we want to plug everybody in. We have people of knowledge here. Before you guys start talking about Medina, Egypt, all that, take benefit where you can. Where you are. Learn here. Yeah. Uh. Don't say there's a lot of people saying. Oh, you guys got Sheikh Abdul Biha come back to you guys, you know? Uh. You're doing classes for us. Yeah. Alright, you're gonna do some kutub. Yes. So we're ready, inshallah. But we need to benefit from the people here. We can't just sit here and say, I'm gonna wait till that application gets accepted. Because Allah may not will that for you. And show Allah that you're deserving to go to Medina. Absolutely, yeah. By taking the steps yeah. here, showing you that you are sadiq, that you're truthful yeah. about. Yeah. One thing to study. And I've yeah. seen many people like that. They would spend their money. They would have tireless nights. You know, moving from East London to West London. Sometimes it takes two hours. Two hours, Habibi. One time I had a class in East London. Sorry, in West London. I just finished the Dora. We finished teaching Arba'in Nawiyah. And we had our final class in Fiqh on the other side, East London. Wallah, it took us one hour and 55 minutes. Mm. And I had the brothers who were attending, both in the car as well. Brothers like Jabir. You know, may Allah bless him, 6'5" got another brother called uh, his name is actually they call him 65 <laughs> Yunus Marshall. and some of the other East London brothers I, and they people. traveled me all the way there we had the class I still remember that day Allah. as a determination and some of these brothers got accepted that's what it is Allah you know? even there's another brother called uh, Abu Zaid recently got accepted Mashallah. he thinks I don't, I don't know that he got accepted but he's just I heard he's waiting for the time to actually meet me so he can tell me in person mm. you know, it's out of respect I think it is Allah. you know as someone really? who attended the classes, yeah. Akhi would spend his money, he would go from one place to another. That's and he got accepted. Right. Akhi, that's, 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 that's a sign of Sidq. And Allah has granted him that, you know? I mean, may Allah grant us all that. I mean, I mean. Uh, Brother Idris, um, what would be your last remarks that you would give, um, especially, you know, the hal, the situations we spoke about, maybe about yesterday? Give us some last uh, reminders, inshallah. Well, I. Uh Nothing, nothing much. All I would say is, inshallah, hopefully we can connect with the brothers and the du'at in the UK. Mm. I think there definitely needs to be a connection made. Yes. Um, there's another group that we all know who has that well connection between the US and the UK. Yeah. But we also need who? to. <laughs> oh, <I'll tell> you <laughs> the brothers who we know we know. Well, con the well connect the brothers. Um, like in, you know, the brother, you and all the other du'at, uh, Ustad Yahya and all those other great brothers inshallah they got to be well connected with, with the u.s as well so that way it becomes easier for them to come i think the first time is always the hardest yeah and it just gets easier from then inshallah and the first that we weathered the, the storm hardest, huh <laughs> nah, that nine hours was worth it man nah, nah. Allah nah. seeing all nah, these nah, brothers and sisters nah, attending and nah, we love you, uh, you know in Allah waves Allah 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 Allah
we can learn and benefit from you guys and you guys can learn and benefit from us and so on and so forth and create a stronger bond inshallah between the ummah everyone um, our Dean love viewers we hope you enjoyed that and then uh, we know where uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our uh, guest Ustad Abu Taymiyyah and make his travel easy and make dua for us you're the traveler you know we need your dua inshallah Minnesota you know you showed out and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rectify our affairs and our shortcomings also yeah. shout out to no, ask Allah to, to deliberalize uh, Amin. 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 shout out to STMN YBA yes. Brother Uman Zakiri, the two Zakiris. Big, big shout out to Abdul uh, Malik and Sully, Luqman. The brothers who are heavily involved in setting it up. Inshallah, today we're going to be in the night. And, and also Abu Bakr. With a nice. Measure Abu Bakr. Yeah, Measure Abu Bakr, hey, man. Apologies, 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 you know, apologies, guys. Apologies, and may Allah forgive all of us and, um, you know, bless them. Phase four coming, inshallah. inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> Until four. next time. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad subhanahu wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk assalamu alaykum